Hi, everyone. It is day four of your Empowered Yoga Challenge, and we are going to do a mobility training. All you need is your chair, so I encourage you to sit nice and tall in your chair, no slump, slouching or slumping like so. Come a little bit forward and ground the feet into the floor, pressing down, spreading the toes. Every time we come to yoga training, we want to make sure it's extremely intentional and purposeful. Taking the left hand and placing it at the bottom of your chair, roll the shoulders back, pressing the feet down. Let the weight of the head move to the right. And we're going to breathe in the left side of our neck. Be sure to not lift the right shoulder up. In fact, if you want to drop your right arm as if someone is pulling your right arm down, that might be helpful. We're going to do the breathing technique of a slow inhale from the belly up and an even slower exhale from the top down. And imagine you're breathing directly into the left side of the neck. Remember, we're not stretching the neck here. We're processing stress hormones out of the physical tissues and that in turn will create mobility. Let's turn the chin to the right shoulder. So we're getting more of the back of the neck as well as the side of the neck. The deeper and slower and more purposeful you breathe, the more effective you will be at processing stress hormones out of these tissues. Check the alignment of your spine. Make sure you're not rounding or slumping. This is also going to strengthen the muscles around the spine to kind of train yourself to stay in proper alignment. Let's do the other side. So now the right hand will come underneath the bottom of the seat. And you can actually take your chin to your chest and then the left ear to the left shoulder and lift the chin. And you're using the weight of the head to open up the right side of the neck and breathing right into this area. So we're not pressing, we're not pushing, we're not pulling. And those actions are commonly equated with stretching, which is why I don't like to use that word. And flexibility tends to have some comparison with it. And that's why I don't like to use that word. So mobility, feeling good, processing stress. Those are the messages that we want to send to ourselves. Take the chin to the left shoulder. Relax the jaw. Without the yoga breathing, we're not practicing yoga. We're just tilting our head to the side. So it's really the breath work that's making this intentional. And then turn the chin to the chest, roll the shoulders back, and on an inhale, lift the chin up off the chest, and imagine that you have a wall behind you. So let's place the hand behind the head and press the head into the hand to lengthen the back of the neck. I'm not tucking my chin like this. I'm just making sure my chin isn't jutting forward, which can happen a lot when you're working with monitors and computers. So we press it back. Hand to the top of the head, press the head up. Now, keeping this alignment, we're going to take the left ankle, grab it if you need to, pull it up as best you can, and place it on the right thigh. Notice I'm making 90 degree angles with my right leg and my left leg. If it's too difficult to get the leg up this high, you can also cross the ankle, cross the left ankle over the right. So we're externally rotating the left leg. We're trying to get into the side of the hip. So pressing the right foot down, either crossing the ankles or the left ankle over the right thigh. Notice that you immediately want to round the spine because it's going to relieve some of the pressure there. Remember that the pressure you're feeling, <clears throat> the resistance you're feeling, the sensation in your hip is stress. When we feel tight, and our connective tissue are, is tight and stiff, it's because stress hormones have gripped them. So we have to breathe into wherever we're feeling that tightness, which is signaling to the nervous system that it's okay to let go. And as best you can work on lengthening the spine upward. You do not have to tilt forward if you're already feeling the sensation. I like to take hold of my bottom foot and my knee and kind of press in. When you press down with the right foot and with the butt bones, you're sitting up taller. And if you have the space to tilt from the hips forward, you can. Remember, we're not rounding this way. It's not a spinal flexion, it's a hip tilt. The breath is the most important thing. 
take the right hand to the left knee so you are facing the left leg and just take a couple breaths and a twist. We inhale to fill up this torso and sit tall and we exhale to wring out the spine like a washcloth. Let's do the other side. So we press the left foot firmly down, taking the right ankle and crossing it. The sides of our body, we wish they could be equal, but they are often not equal. So if you find that you have to cross the right ankle over the left, totally fine. It's all about scalability and adapting to what our body needs from us that day. So it's not a matter of capability as much as responding to your capacity of that day. Also know that the body reflects the mind. So if you've had a stressful mental day, it will show up in your body and make your hips feel tighter. Hips tend to also hold on to the stress hormones of memories. I always say that my high school heartbreak is in my hips. You can tilt forward, you can grab your leg, whatever you do, the breath work and the extension of the spine truly is number one. Left foot directly underneath the left knee. All right, let's twist it. Right hand to the armrest, left hand to the right knee, keeping all of this from the belly down, nice and square. You are twisting the rib cage, shoulders down. Exhale, twist. And coming back to center, feet on the ground, just feel nice and settled for one breath, palms on the thighs, relax the jaw. And for our last movement, let's do downward facing dog using the chair. You will stand up to take the back of the chair and you're going to make a 90 degree angle with your body. So hands on the chair, walking the feet back and the chest moves down towards the floor. Notice I'm making a 90 degree angle, which allows me to open up my chest and shoulders. Now bring awareness to your shoulders. Can you make sure they're not up by your ears, but the shoulder blades are sliding down the back towards the hips. You are pressing down on the feet, lift the toes off the floor so you know you're not gripping your toes. Maybe lift the navel towards the spine, close the ribs, but allow the chest to lower between the shoulders. Inhale. As you exhale, right hand comes to the center of the chair. The left hand is gonna lower down towards the floor. And just like we did when we were seated, the lower body stays square. We're not gonna move the hips or legs around. You're gonna lower the left hand down, look under the right shoulder to get a deep twist in the upper body. And let me ask you a question. Did you stop your concentrated yoga breathing? Left hand to center, right hand lowers down. So everything is the same as if we were doing just a regular down dog on the chair, the hips, the knees, the toes, even the left arm is the same. We're just lowering the right arm and peeking underneath our shoulder. This is also gonna be a great shoulder opener. And right hand back to the chair, big inhale. One more deep, slow, ah, releasing exhale. Walk the feet up to the chair so you're standing tall. Head back, head lifted, shoulder roll. And there you are. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. You do have homework to do later today or anytime this week or whenever you would like. We have a five-minute seated practice on Cyber Academy. So go to your Cyber Academy app. You can also find it on the website for Yoga for First Responders under classes and on demand and find the five-minute seated practice. And that's going to prep you for our next video.